I mean, one way to think about the immune system is that it, your immune cells are like any other cell in your body. They need basic nutrients. And if you're deprived of those basic nutrients, which is not that hard to do when you're eating the standard American diet, the SAD diet, um, if you're eating that kind of diet or you know, eating a lot of processed foods, then you can very easily miss out on getting the most fundamental nutrients. Everyone, welcome back to the Holistic Navigator podcast, where we believe in the body's capacity for self-healing if it's given the proper nutrients and care it deserves. My name is Brian Strickland. I'm the producer of the show, and I'm joined in the studio today, as always, by Ed Jones. And on this week's episode, we welcome back Dr. Robert Roundry to talk about his favorite supplements that everyone should be taking to help combat illness. Dr. Roundry is a practicing physician out of Boulder, Colorado, and he is the chief medical officer for Thorn. And we wanted to take a look at some of his favorite supplements, plus one in particular, and that is quercetin. Quercetin is a powerful nutrient that really everyone can benefit from. So we wanted to take an in-depth look at that today. We've got a ton to cover today. This is a great episode. And if you're curious about where to start or how to combat illness, then this really is the show for you. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get this episode started. Here is your host, Mr. Ed Jones. Thank you, Brian, very much for that. And and again, we are here. This is Ed Jones with The Holistic Navigator. And you know, we're up to past 100 podcasts now, and it's something I truly, truly uh, wake up in the morning and look forward so much to do these, especially when I'm talking to someone who is a storehouse of not only knowledge, but experience. And, you know, I've learned through all my years, I'm 64 now, uh, there is a difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I am very much invested in wise people. That doesn't mean they always have to have degrees on the wall, but I really like people who have both a lot of uh, uh, school study and practice and also wisdom. And today we're going to go back into a kind of a review of a podcast we had last year on the immune system and how to uh, empower it in a quick mode and fashion if we need it. And the gentleman, I've known him for many, many years, uh, sp- uh, spoke to him on several occasions, met him a couple times, uh, Dr. Robert Roundtree. Welcome to The Holistic Navigator. Hey, it's great to be back on again. You did such a phenomenal job last, and I don't know for sure the date, but last year, probably in about May, uh, we went through a list of what does a person need to basically have as their toolkit ready to roll if they get what I call under the weather? And we're not going to use any specific names of any conditions, but if someone wants to very quickly empower their immune system, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today because that was the focus last year. I had you and only one other physician during that that craziness of last year, and both of you were lifesavers, I know for a fact, because uh, we shared this uh, throughout our city, throughout our state, throughout the United States, and because we were in the top 1% of health podcasts globally, I know it was shared uh, outside of our borders, and knowledge is power, and there's so much fake uh, news out there regarding everything, including nutrition, uh, and I'm a person who won't put up with that. I want the nitty-gritty. I want the absolute truth. Uh, some things we won't know absolutely, but I'm always going to find the clearest source of truth there is. And with you, uh, Dr. Roundtree, I, I trust you completely. If if I had a health issue, and, and I don't trust most people in the medical field, but I would certainly uh, bow down to whatever good advice you would give me. So today, I want... Uh, well, that's very kind of you to say, Ed. And, well, and you know the system, the, tr- the traditional medical system is wonderful for acute care emergencies. You, you know, I'm in a car wreck. Hey, I just bought me an electric bike like two weeks ago. If I fall on that thing, hey, I'm not going to, to my nutrition store or some herbalist. I'm going to someone in the traditional medical facilities to patch me up. They're miraculous uh, heart attacks and urgent cares. But when it comes to, to things like immune system and chronic diseases and, and aging 
Well, they don't have a toolbox that contains hardly anything. You have filled your toolbox. In fact, you know, you graduated in 1980 from the North Carolina School of Medicine and Chapel you know, Hill. Chapel Hill. And you have pursued, uh, you're on the, uh, have a, a board uh, rating on the holistic medicine, extensive postgraduate studies in nutrition, herbal pharmacology, author of several books. I love the title of one of those Revolutionary Way to Fight Infection, Beat Chronic Illness, and Stay well. So you are a, uh, an encyclopedia, there's no doubt. Well, I know last year, again, we're talking about an immune system that if someone's listening, hey, I need to activate it, not next week. I'm trying to activate it today. And we yeah. know that that there's a, a lot of drugs are prescribed in traditional medicine. None of these stimulate immune systems. They may actually weaken it because they're wanting to not have a response. We're talking about we're wanting to make this a robust, resilient uh, military within us. We have a natural pharmacy within us. I want to know from you, as as you told last year, but maybe with some tweaking, what nutrients should someone consider if they are ready for battle? Okay. Um uh, sure enough, that's a, that's really one of my favorite topics. Uh, I have to say that many years ago, um, uh, I was involved in some lobbying organizations for the uh, for herbal medicine, and I got interviewed by some national uh, media asking me, "Well, did I think this is the future of medicine?" And I said, "Well, absolutely. You know the the." The evidence is there. It's herbal medicine is safe. Nutritional medicine is safe. I think this is going to take over medicine in this country. And I hate to say it, it didn't happen. And I mean, it's gotten more popular than ever, right? Millions and millions of people are taking supplements, doing things on their own. But what I thought was going to happen is that mainstream medicine would look at the data and based on the evidence alone would say, hey, this is it. This is how we ought to be practicing medicine. So I, I I never really seen the kind of stuff we're talking about is fringe medicine. I always just thought it was good science. Uh, and so everything I want to talk about is basically uh, oriented around what, what do the studies show, right? And the, what the studies show is that they don't really uh, – that stimulate the immune system probably isn't the word we want to use. And the reason I say that is because on, on the label of a lot of supplements, like melatonin is a really good example. It says, don't take if you have an autoimmune disease. You know, and, and the reason they say that is because they think it stimulates the immune system. And the, the misunderstanding about that is that the immune system is one thing. Now, you talk about it being military, but it's a military with many different branches, right? There's an army, the navy, navy, marines, and you know there's the air force, all these different divisions, and they talk to each other, they communicate with each other, but they all have different tasks and different focuses, etc. And so the idea that one thing like melatonin can stimulate the whole immune system and suddenly cause it to attack the body, I hate to say it, I think it's nonsense. Um, in fact, I have given melatonin, which is a, a great an immune regulator. That's the word I like to use. It's an immune optimizer. It it enhances resilience is a word you use. That's a that's a word that we're all kind of going for these days. Is how do you how do you get your immune system resilient? Um, and how do you do it sometimes in a fairly short period of time? Now, my hope is that maybe people will listen to this and say. Um, perhaps I shouldn't wait until I'm short of breath and then reach for some vitamin D, right? Correct. And, and, and that is what <laughs> has happened to many people. You know, you wake up or you're it's Saturday afternoon and all of a sudden you're like, what's going on? I'm feeling pretty bad right now. Well, yeah. you're going to, okay, you're going to hang out a little bit. And then by the time the night falls, you realize I'm really starting to get sick. Uh, you can't really think clearly. You may have a temperature. You can't get someone to go to the store, accumulate all the things that you really weren't prepared to, to do. So yes, I, this list that you're going to give will be the, a very concise, extremely safe. And I love the fact that you said earlier, and I was the same way in regard to thinking that that evidence would convince more of, of the traditional 
practitioners mm-hmm. to embrace what we are now have enough evidence to support, which we didn't have a long time ago. You and I both mm-hmm. know that. It was mm-hmm. a lot of more guesswork, a lot more of hopefulness. Well, we have it now. You can look at PubMed for anything and see the massive amounts of background. And it didn't happen. Now, COVID has turned the corner of individuals that I have seen, so many people, that yep. it did open their eyes to at least that particular conversation that, you know what, being unhealthy is really unsafe and maybe we could eat healthier, exercise more and embrace certain nutrients. So on that list, I know earlier last year, you kind of went through the alphabet with that list, didn't you? Yep. yep. Call it the alphabet list. And, and the thing that I have to say is that this is not that specific to any particular virus or any particular infection. Right. Right. So our immune system can use this kind of nutritional support, whatever you're talking about. Yeah, whatever. And and you're right. This is nothing specific for any disease at all. We're talking we're trying to make that natural pharmacy within and that military of all the branches of the military act appropriately and be resilient. Yep. Yep. So, I, I mean, one way to think about the immune system is that. It, your immune cells are like any other cell in your body. They need basic nutrients. And if you're deprived of those basic nutrients, which is not that hard to do when you're eating the standard American diet, the SAD diet, um, if you're eating that kind of diet or you know, eating a lot of processed foods, then you can very easily miss out on getting the most fundamental nutrients. And so, you know, when we talk about it, nutrients that support, optimize the immune system, induce resiliency. We're not necessarily talking about really esoteric things, right? We're talking about the alphabet. It's A, B, C, right? A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Every single one of those is good. So I, um, I think the important thing is for people to make sure they're taking enough of it. So, I mean, vitamin A is a really good place to start. Um, You know, vitamin A is really, uh, it gets no respect. Um, First of all, people have this idea that if I eat a carrot every day, I'm getting plenty of vitamin A. Well, you're not. That's pro-vitamin A, right? Beta carotene. Beta carotene is fine, but you really need that whole range of, of carotenoids, you know, lycopene, et cetera. And here's the big problem. There's a genetic variation in a huge percentage of the population that keeps them from converting pro-vitamin A, beta carotene, into real vitamin A, which is retinol, right? Mm -hmm. The the real vitamin A, that's what you you get in an animal food. So it's, it's not that easy to get it if you're vegetarian. Right. You, you know, you're about your only option is just to eat a lot more beta carotene and hope you don't have a genetic variant. But for the rest of us, we really need the pre what's called preformed vitamin A. Right. And the reason that it doesn't get respect is because some studies came out a few years back suggesting that too much vitamin A might cause osteoporosis. Might be a problem. Well, we certainly know you can overdose on vitamin A. There's no question. It can give you brain swelling, headaches, liver swelling. But, you know, that's for people that are eating polar bear liver. Mm. Right? So you really got to do a, take a lot of it. Now, I feel very comfortable telling people to stick around the range of ten to 20,000 international units a day. And that really is enough to help regulate the immune system, optimize the immune system. Um, but, you know, and, and, and I haven't really seen toxicity from it. I've had a lot of people on it. I measure blood levels, so it can be careful. Uh, I haven't seen a downside in that range, right? So, again, I always start with the A. I think a lot of people need it. A lot of people are deficient in it. And it, it helps regulate the immune system. And one way it does that, is it helps actually improves tolerance. So I give it a lot to people who are at risk of having their immune system turned back on themselves, what we call autoimmune disease. Um, it's not the cure. 
right? It's not like here's a person with an autoimmune disease, they take A and it's going to magically melt away, but it does help cool off the immune system so it becomes more tolerant. And you know, Dr. Entry, when you and I spoke last year, and I've done a tremendous amount of writings on all topics, and just because I've done this for four plus decades, uh, I I do have a a pretty decent following. And one of the papers, the main one that I actually came up with, which was ideas and suggestions for a quick acting protocol for the immune system, uh, I did not have vitamin A on that until I talked to you. And I, you know, I was in that world, too, of, you know, the the Accutane world of oh my gosh you mm-hmm. know the synthetic version look at all the yep. side effects and it kind of kind of got in me a little bit so I was kind of always shying away after your podcast with me on the Holistic Navigator last year I really dug into it and we have to have or if we're short of vitamin A it's going to affect one the lungs very significantly mm-hmm. and that is yep. a real key piece to this this quick acting thing and again we're talking about vitamin a in, in a quick sense no one's going to have a side effect in 6 days because generally yep. between 5 and 10 days is the length of time you'll take this relatively high dose so you're talking about 20,000 units of the real fish liver oil vitamin a not yep. beta carotene yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, how, exactly. About, how about vitamin D? Where do we go with that? Now, so D, uh, and just because we're going through the alphabet, oh. there's there's the B vitamins. Okay, let's do that. Right, you don't you don't need a lot, but just a, a good basic B complex, you know, that's got the active forms of the of all the Bs in there. Um, and again, I'm the way I'm framing this is your immune systems or your immune cells are like any other cell in the body, right? They need all the nutrients. Right, just to function, they need those nutrients, and a lot of people are underdosed on these things. They're not getting enough through their food. So a B complex for everybody, the vitamin A for everybody, vitamin C. Um, well, before you know, you, before I, you go, the vitamin C, I, you just reminded we'll go, me we, that last year you all we also did another podcast. I'm I'm 99 sure with you that you talked about MTHFR and how people with this gene defect mm-hmm. should not use folic acid, the synthetic version. And so you made just a great point that this B complex, the right ones, uh, would have folate, not the the inexpensive cheap ones. Don't. And so yes, again, like the vitamin uh, A story, the devil's in the details. Let's tweak it and let's make it really work. So yes, a B complex that has a natural form of folate, not the synthetic folic acid yeah i take the methylfolate myself because i have that genetic uh i I like to call it a variant rather than a defect that sounds a little bit more more pleasant Mm -hmm. but um i i do have that mthfr variant and uh i do tend to have a little higher than normal homocysteine as a result and you know we we haven't done a lot of research on this but there's evidence to think that a high homocysteine is toxic to the immune system Right. High homocysteine is a toxin. So, you know, the uh, it, again, it stands to reason that you'd want to go with that methylfolate. Um, some people say to me, well, I feel a little irritable when I take methylfolate. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything is wrong. It just means that you need to back off on the dose, maybe do it every other day until your system adjusts to it. And I've had I've gone through this with countless patients. Right. Who had to adjust a little bit when they first started doing it. They, you know, I, I think of it as like you you needed this supplement. You start taking it. Suddenly you're feeling really good and your body doesn't know what to do with that sensation. Exactly. <laughs> right? And and you know what? You you explained it so well on that previous podcast on methylation. So if you go back to the Holistic Navigator, you can actually Google it and put the word methylation, your lecture will pop up. So that will give people the further details if they want to pursue that. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I, I love that advice. So we're talking alphabet again. You got we got the yeah, A code, a, we got the B. B. What's next? I then, guess we would guess. And then, yeah, we go with vitamin C. Um, you know, I, I certainly think it's one of the, the old standards. And uh, it, you know, most everybody should benefit from at least 500 milligrams a day, right? Some people mm-hmm. can take several thousand milligrams a day and it doesn't upset their stomach or cause loose stools or anything like that. So that's, that's fine. I'm, I'm a little more of a mind. I, I don't use these huge doses like I used to because I'm doing the whole alphabet. And I think when you're mixing them all together, you don't necessarily need 
you know, 10 grams of, of vitamin C every single day, even though that was the range that Landis Pauling talked about. Um, and, you know, I, I do respect Dr. Pauling's work. I think an interesting thing about vitamin C is when given intravenously in high doses, and we're talking 25 grams, uh, it actually increases free radicals in your, in your bloodstream. And that increase in free radicals actually kills off viruses. Mm -hmm. So uh, it can be very helpful for certain viral infections. And again, not making any health claims, anything like that. But, you know, nowadays there's uh, IV drip centers that seem like they're opening up on every corner, every street corner. Yes, they are. Um, you're in Chattanooga, right? Or are you right. Still in Chattanooga? And, and, and we have one right down the actual street from our wellness center. And I go do the glutathione and vitamin C on a regular basis. And now on my on the quick acting immune under the weather protocol, I'm kind of saying, you know, if we can do some vitamin C about every three hours, again, we're only talking five yep. to eight days. Yep. Uh, yep. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for preventive purposes, 500 to 1,000. Right. But if you start to feel uh, under the weather, as you say, um, then it doesn't hurt to take it all day long. Now, the, you know, the biggest issue with it is that it's not in your system very long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, taking it every few hours, as much as you can take, uh, up to the point of getting loose stools, well, that's certainly fine. And definitely part of my protocol. Um, I do think that if, if you have access to a place that gives IV vitamin C and high doses, uh, that that's what I do personally, uh, and have done many times. You know, if I I start to feel like something's not quite right, um, well, head on in and and uh, and get that IV. It's it can be quite amazing, actually. I agree. So, yeah, so the preventive dose, then a higher dose if you start to feel like you're coming down with something, and then the super high dose if you go, well, I, I really need to turn this around. So that's that's A, B, C, D. Everybody's heard of vitamin D. I mean, when it was interesting because I've been lecturing on vitamin D for 25 years, right? Wow. And, you know, I, I met Dr. Michael Hollick, who's uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think Boston University, who's uh, one of the top vitamin D researchers, he discovered the active form of vitamin D, the 125 dihydroxy D. He discovered that. Um, and, you know, of course, you've got mainstream doctors saying, well, Michael Hollick's a quack. I'm like, well, the guy wrote the review article on vitamin D for the New England Journal of Medicine. And I think. I don't know how you can say this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because he really understands the chemistry of it. And he basically says, look, you're not going to get toxic if you're taking two to 5,000 a day. Right. And I think most everybody can benefit from taking two to 5,000 a day. Maybe if you're a lifeguard in Australia, mm -hmm. maybe you don't need mm -hmm. that much. If you're laying out, you know, in your, if you live in, in a warm area and you lay out in your backyard in your thong every day, uh, well, I'd be worried about getting skin cancer if that was the case. But I'm not going to be so much worried about your vitamin D levels. But for the rest of us, um, you know, I, I go out living in Colorado. I go hiking up to 11,000 feet every week. And you'd think I'm getting plenty of vitamin D, but I don't. I don't like all that sun exposure. I wear a big hat, long sleeve shirt. You know, I, I really try to protect my skin because I'm not getting any younger. Um, so I can't count on the sun to give me that vitamin D. Right. And I take 5,000 a day and I've checked my levels, the 25 hydroxy D level. That's what you want to check. And 5,000 a day just barely keeps me into the healthy range. 
Well, I know with myself, right. we have a lab here, and, and I've done so much testing, and I have to do about actually 14,000 units a day to maintain about a 54 nanograms per milliliter, mm-hmm. which is I want to mm-hmm. be above 50, and I think you would agree. Uh, and I do it food with fat first thing in the morning. But, yep. again, if and that's uh, I think everyone needs to get blood tested. I think Dr. Hollick should have a, a Nobel Peace Prize win, uh, uh, medal because that his information started all of us down this path of, 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 I remember the day where, I mean, my nutrition store might have had two brands of vitamin D and there were 400 units a piece and we sold very few of them because no one recognized it. Everyone thought it could be dangerous in high amounts. Well, now we know that every disease of chronic aging might have a relationship to being low in vitamin D, but especially mm-hmm. uh, falling prey to really aggressive infections. And that's why I really like it when recommendations are made, and which you, I know you do and you will do, on really high dosing for a period of five to eight days. And uh, so what would that be if they're trying to optimize their immune system on the quick run? Okay, so first few things to know is like, if you're taking already taking some D, one to 5,000 a day, and you have an okay level of D that's not at the higher end of the range, um, there is suggestive evidence, I should say, that taking super high doses of D for several days, and I'm deliberately vague about the several days, right? Is it two days, three days? You know, How long is it? Is it five days? Um, I, t- I tend to end up with around three days for most people of somewhere between 50 and 100,000 a day, depending on you know, what their overall health status is, what the need is. Now, I've actually asked Dr. Hollick about this, and he, what he says is, well, I can't officially tell you how effective that's going to be, but I can tell you it's safe. Really? So the you know words from the horse's mouth is wonderful. I said, well, you know I'm giving people hundred thousand units for three days. Well, there are medical studies where they gave people those kind of doses, right? So there it's not unheard of. Now there was a study, uh, a COVID study that I think was done. It might have been done in Latin America, where they gave people uh, like single dose of high dose vitamin D, and it didn't do anything. And I thought, well, of course. Uh, something you got to be aware of is that when you're taking the vitamin D in a supplement form, it takes a, a day or two before the body converts it into the 125 active form. It's the 125 that actually gets the immune cells going. So it doesn't work overnight, right? It takes a few, there's a delayed effect with, with vitamin D. And so, I generally end up with about a three-day dosing regimen. You know, three days, super high dose, uh, never seen toxicity with it. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I can't tell you there's published studies on it at all. I could just tell you that I know a lot of practitioners that have followed that protocol for decades and I, done that. And, and my general impression is that, you know, it, it, it helps. Well, and the thing is, and I, I, I appreciate so much your your wisdom on this because, you know, we are in a crazy world, and and there's so much censorship going on. And one of the things that have been censored is the current state of affairs as far as PubMed research on vitamin D and some of the you know infections going around. We will say, and it's 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 criminal to me that that is happening because one is it's so extremely safe, it's so inexpensive. We know darker skinned people have lower levels. We know that darker skinned mm-hmm. people are dying at a much higher rate than people who have a lighter skin because lighter skin makes more vitamin D. Uh, It doesn't take 14 degrees on the wall to have common sense. You can have common sense and and, and not have any degrees. And we've lost this in some of this thinking. Of course, there's agendas that who knows where and what they are. We don't get into that. I want to say real quickly that we got to move on down the list. I will 
tell you that I had a client once, and I'll make this really short. It was about a 65-year-old gentleman. He actually had been diagnosed with multiple myeloma, been uh, a client of mine for 25 years. He comes in, and I get to talk to him, and I, I recommend a few things for his immune system. And I say to him, I would like for your vitamin D to get go up real quickly. So I gave him a bottle of 50,000 unit of vitamin D, 12 pills. That's always in the bottle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he and I said, I'd like you to take this once a day for 12 days because I wanted mm-hmm. to hurry it up. Well, guess what happened? I didn't see this man for one straight year just because of coincidence. He would come into our center and, and but talk to other people. After about 12 months, I ran into him. I said, so tell me what's going on. He said, man, my my cancer is just it's stable. It hadn't got any mm-hmm. worse. The docs are shocked. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, so what, you, what are you taking? He said, well, I'm still doing the mushrooms and I'm doing. And I said, well, how about the D? He said, I'm still taking it. I said, how would you switch to? He said, I didn't switch to anything. I've been buying the 50,000 unit. I said, <laughs> what? You've been Oops. taking 50,000 units a day for over a year. Yeah. And he would not get a blood test. He uh, he went off of it, and a year and a half later, he died. Now, oh. he was totally stable for oh, 14 months, totally stable, that mm-hmm. it was like a miracle. Not saying it was the D, but there's still some uh, some evidence in that whole story that presents itself to me very strongly. So we got the A, the B, the C, the D next. And they all go hand in hand, right? So the A and the D really go well together. Mm-hmm. They're synergistic with each other. Uh, now, I don't tend to, you know, bump up the dose of the A like I do with the D. Uh, but the, here's the deal with the D uh, for infection is that vitamin D activates a system in the, in, it's not just the immune system, but it's in the body called the antimicrobial peptide system, the AMP system. These are naturally occurring antibiotics that are antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. But one of the best known ones is cathelicidin, and the other one is called defensin. And so the rationale behind this extra dose of vitamin D, it's not magic, right? All it's doing is activating this system that is partly produced by immune cells and also by cells that line the respiratory tract and the GI tract And it's telling them to ramp up production of these antimicrobial peptides. That was the, that they didn't know it, but that was probably why it worked to take people with two TB and send them to Kellogg sanitarium and have them sit out uh, on the deck every day. Cause that the vitamin D they're getting from the sun is stimulating antimicrobial peptides, which kill tuberculosis. Wow. What a story. So, this antimicrobial peptide thing, I, I'll tell you, the pharmaceutical companies are trying to figure out how do we make those guys, right? We want to make them uh, because they're, they're very, very powerful and they're non-toxic. But the best way we know to, to, to boost production of them uh, is with vitamin D. And vitamin A, I think, helps as well. Uh, and I've also seen studies on curcumin, which is my favorite herb. Uh, you know, especially the curcumin phytosome, uh, which is in the, the, the sunflower lecithin form. That's a that's an herb. You know, it's not part of your, your alphabet here, but it's certainly something that complements all of this. So we've got A, B, C, D, and then let's let's jump to the N, which was in acetylcysteine, one of my all time favorite uh, nutrients. Uh, best way to put it. It's N-acetylcysteine is a slightly modified form of a naturally occurring amino acid, cysteine. Now, the reason cysteine is so important is because it is the rate-limiting precursor to making glutathione. So glutathione is the most important uh, antioxidant in the body. And it's made of three basic nutrients, cysteine, glutamine, and glycine, right? We've generally got enough of the glutamine and the glycine around, but the cysteine can be uh, in short supply. And so when you add in acetylcysteine, it increases glutathione in the body. And glutathione has antiviral effects. It, it helps neutralize free radicals. So it's 
It's a great anti-inflammatory. I would say NAC in a dose of somewhere between 500 and, and 3,000 a day has been on my A list of supplements for 30 years. And, and I found out about it because we were trained to use it in medical school. What do we use it for? We use it for acetaminophen overdose. So if a person overdoses on acetaminophen, what happens is the, the liver uses up all this glutathione and the acetaminophen ends up being converted into this highly toxic compound that will basically melt the liver in one or two days. So, you know, that's probably the worst way for a person to try to do themselves in is to eat a bottle of, of acetaminophen because it's a bad way to go. Uh, I mean, it, it rots the liver. A person gets really sick. It's not pleasant. And it's been standard of care in hospital emergency care units for as long as I can remember to give them NAC. I love that. And, and, you know, the fact that uh, we still hear uh, uh, articles every single day, supposed experts say, you know, if you're feeling under the weather, take some Tylenol. no. That does not no. make sense because it's no. depleting no. This, the glutathione, and that's what we needed to fight the battle. But yet they're still yep. saying t- Tylenol, Tylenol, uh, and and you know NAC. If and if people are listening, a lot of them are very well uh, schooled in this world of uh, nutrition and holistic. You know the FDA is attempting to make it prescription. Why? It's not yep. because of any risk. It's because of uh, agendas of profit. And, you know, the nutrition industry sold it for decades. Now, yep. uh, just to make a segue into this, again, I want people to, to know that we have to find also brands that we trust. And I've mm-hmm. been in this industry for over 40 years, and there it's not like a you're going to have any poison from a cheap brand, but you're not going to get the benefit because it's not made of quality origin. And I'm in, I'm really encouraging people to stock up on NAC. I know, you know, the Holistic Navigator is sponsored by NutritionW.com, who has the uh, the services to to expedite any shipping anywhere in the United States. And they also pack everything for one dollar. You get a cold packs because in the summer I've always been concerned about this Amazon crap because they'll send it out, and these are are sometimes perishable nutrients. They sit on a UPS truck, which when you Google it, they get up to 145 degrees. That can destroy it. So NutritionW.com has all of the leading brands. They vet everything. And I will put a plug in for Thorn. Thorn's one of the most highly uh, consistent, scientifically backed, uh, pharmaceutical level type of company. And I just love the, f- the fact that they put all of their whole kit in to make the very, very best of everything. So I just want to put a plug in for them uh, in regard to this. So yes, NAC, uh, I take it daily for prevention, but when I got under the weather, and I have to thank you, Dr. Roundtree, because I got, again, we'll call it under the weather, last year after your podcast, I had gone on my one vacation a year, went to Florida, and before I left, I thought, hmm, you know what? I'm not going to be able to find the stuff I want down there, so I better pack my little uh, under-the-weather toolkit. I did. I put Mm -hmm. it in a separate sack. I get down there. The very first night I'm there, I wake up with a cough that I had never experienced in my whole life. And so the next morning, I wake up. You know what? I I start taking all the goodies that you spoke about at the correct doses. And Mm -hmm. the next day, Mm -hmm. I was 50% better. The third day, I was like, okay, I'm tired. I never got tested. Came back and I had about three weeks of fatigue, but then the lab that we have here locally said, "Hey, we got a new test for antibodies." I got tested. They called back and said, "You have the highest antibodies so far that we have ever tested for." You know wow. what? And I was like, "Thank wow. you, Doctor Roundtree," because I had your toolkit in my bag and started it, and I had you know two and a half kind of crappy days and just fatigue for a few weeks. So it worked. It worked for me, and NAC was a huge part of that. So, um, yes, so we've covered the NAC. What would be the next alphabet? And I got to say, there yeah. are published studies on NAC that for its antiviral uh, effects for helping people who are under the weather. So it's not the it's not just for sedaminophen toxicity, right? It's not its other big use is for treating thick mucus and people that have cystic fibrosis. Yes. It's actually the brand name of it is Mucomist. 
and it can be used as an inhaler. And I've done this. You can actually buy the liquid. It's a prescription. Mm -hmm. So a doctor has to get it for you, but you can get it in a prescription and put it in a asthma inhaler nebulizer. Right. And you can breathe it in and that NAC works directly in the lungs. So, so it's not just for support in the liver. Uh, it's, it's a mucus thinner. Uh, it's an antiviral. It's a pretty remarkable thing. And yeah, if you ever feel so inclined to call the FDA and say, uh, please do not take this off the market. There's no toxicity. It's inexpensive. It's a readily available substance to help anybody and everybody who's under the weather. And, you know, the only motivation I can see for them taking off the market is so that instead of it costing pennies a capsule, it can now cost several dollars a capsule. And, you know, one company will be able to, to you know, make it available under a prescription. Like, there's no advantage to the consumer for no, doing that. No, no. Uh, so, you know, so this is one of those things we got to speak up on because I, and I feel very strongly, I mean, I prescribed it for decades and never seen a problem. That's, that's beautiful. And then, then last but not, not least, um, uh, is the, the vitamin Q quercetin. Um, quercetin is something that I have prescribed in my practice for almost 40 years. I heard about it from in the naturopathic textbooks. Uh, what is it? It's a yellowish pigment. It's in most any fruits and vegetables, right? So if you're eating, you know, salad every day, you're getting a lot of quercetin. Um, it, uh, it's in there because it actually protects the fruits and the vegetables from the damaging effects of sunlight and also from being attacked by insects. So this is part of a, a group of compounds that plants make to to protect themselves so you know plants don't have an immune system they don't have any other way to fight back so they make all kinds of things like this that we call secondary metabolites well i don't know how they discovered this but years ago it was found that in high doses quercetin could stabilize immune cells and pre prevent production of histamine so that they're not anti, of course, it is not an antihistamine, but it's a histamine preventive agent. It's similar to a drug called chromalin. And so the, my initial reason for prescribing it years ago was for allergies. And it works quite well for that. It doesn't work, you know, if a person's sneezing and they take worse and it doesn't, it's, it's not like taking Benadryl or something, you know, that knocks a sneeze out. But taken on a regular basis helps prevent the sneezing. So I've used it for that for years, but then it began to emerge that it has antiviral properties. So it's it's been used to treat a whole range of viruses. Um, and more recently, it's been used to treat people who are under the weather, shall we say. Um, and I found it to be very powerful. Now, Here's one where I, I do want to mention that Thorne has got a version of quercetin called the quercetin phytosome that is really unique. Um, Thorne actually teamed up with this company in, uh, in, in Italy called Indina, who is the world's expert on phytosome. What is a phytosome? The, the phyto means plant. The some means that it's a form of a of a kind of a lecithin like structure that allows it to be absorbed. So quercetin is not well absorbed. And when I prescribed it in the past for allergies, I've had to use 3,000, 5,000 milligrams a day. With the phytosome, you only need something like 250 to 500 once or twice a day. So we're talking about, you know, four caps a day. Occasionally I get people up to six caps a day, but for most people, one cap twice a day, is all they need as a preventive. And then, uh, you know, if they start to feel like they're under the weather, then they can bump that up. I love, I love that. And I will be honest, you know, I hear a tremendous amount of feedback because I work still six days a week and I'm in the trenches every single day. And Thorne's quercetin, 
I have observed over and over is more effective than any particular brand. And 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 Nutrition W carries the very best brands available. And I personally have taken quercetin before and never really felt that I was feeling any significant change. But I did when I did Thorn. So that bound, binding that to a carrier is is incredibly valuable and makes it so much more potent. And we need this during the times of being under the weather to, of course, prevent some of the storms of the immune system and the lung issues and and the, the fluid stuff. And so mm-hmm. and and I know, uh, you know, many people just feel better being on it because they could be slightly allergic and not realize it. And when you start blocking histamines, which is a healthier way than to try to eliminate them, Benadryl eliminates them, of course, it then blocks them. I'd far better served by blocking than trying to eliminate. So, yes, you're so right about the brand Thorn on the quercetin. I, I do myself take two capsules twice daily for prevention. Uh but and that's pretty. Most some people just take one twice a day. But under the weather, I did take a little bit higher dosing of that. Is mm-hmm. totally safe. I know early studies a long ago. I used to recommend it for prostatitis for men, and, yep. and a few other yep. things. So it has multiple yeah, it's health one benefits. Of those, it's a really versatile nutrient in that regard. Yep. And there's a. I I, I actually uh, uh, did a review article on that a number of years ago on the on the prostate issue. And I was kind of blown away. I thought, well, why doesn't every urologist use this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can ask that question about every single thing that we're talking about here. Why why don't the pulmonologists, you know, put people on NAC? Why well, I mean it, you well, look I, at the literature and I, I can't I you know, I lecture to doctors. That's part of what I do for uh, uh professionally. And I can't tell you how many times I've given a lecture and I said, okay. I'm going to talk about NAC. And then I start going through the research and the research papers and these docs come up afterwards and they say, I had no idea. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had no idea. And, like how, I, and the thing I always is, heard and, this and, stuff as quackery. Yeah. And you, you're exactly right because one is the systems broke. They don't. Yeah. They're not going to get taught that. So if they don't have a seeking mind as you did, uh, they probably won't know. Well, to just kind of wind things down here again, doing high dose, short run, totally safe, far more effective. You can't really use prevention doses if you're under the weather. We're talking when we're talking, of course, uh, with the right dosing and the right quality. The last things that I have on my list, and just if you make a small comment, I am a huge believer in moderately high dosing of melatonin at night for the yep. same purpose of immune and I'm also the zinc and the natokinase. Those are the other th- the three yep. things that uh, do you feel those should be included also? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, you know, I, I tell people the A, B, C, D, uh, N, Q, Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So the zinc, but the important thing about zinc is you don't need super high doses. Mm-hmm. So I use the zinc picolinate uh, which is very well absorbed, and I only use 30 milligrams a day as a preventive. There, if if you start using too much zinc, uh, especially when you get up over around 90 milligrams or above, it actually be can be immune suppressant. Mm. So you got to take just enough, right? It's the Goldilocks thing, right? Uh, just enough zinc, and and for most people, 30. For some people, 60. Um, now the higher dose I use for people with leaky gut, right? Cause there is evidence that zinc helps to tighten up those junctions in the cells that line the gut and improve leaky gut syndrome. So I use it a lot for people whose immune systems are turning back on themselves and I'm worried about leaky gut playing a role in there, but an adequate amount of zinc is how I would put it. So you want an adequate amount of zinc, um, I, you know, certainly do that. There was one other that you mentioned. Uh, the natokinase and, of course, oh, you talking about. Oh, natokinase is a fascinating compound. I've eaten – so natokinase comes from natto, which is this fermented soy product. Uh, you know, the Japanese like to serve it with a raw egg. Really? Uh, yeah, I've had it like on, you know, a little ball of rice with a raw egg yolk and natto on top of that. And that is – it is like taking a – wad of chewing gum and putting it in the microwave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, it's, you know, it's a real test of whether you're, you can eat authentic Japanese food. Uh, Cause it's got a very interesting flavor, but in that natto, 
is this enzyme that breaks up clots. It's a clot buster. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't tell people, well, you've got atrial, fib, atrial fibrillation and you've been told, you know, you need to be on a blood thinner. I'm not going to tell them take the natokinase instead. But I do have for people that for some reason can't take the blood thinners. You know, there, there's some other reason why they can't take it. Then natokinase, you know, it, it ain't bad. It's got some pretty good research on it for breaking up fibrin clots. Uh, it's extraordinarily safe. Uh, it doesn't make you hemorrhage. It doesn't make you bleed. It just keeps clots from being formed excessively. So, yeah, love natokinase. Think it's great stuff. Um, and, and I do recommend it for anybody that's at risk of blood clots. So, you know, another example, you get on a plane and fly for several hours. If you're not getting up moving around, then you got to worry about getting a clot in your legs. Exactly. So not a bad thing to take uh, in your little travel kit. And I want to make a quick comment and I see uh, you echo real quickly before we end this. Uh, the people, the women who are listening and said, oh, no, it's soy. One is it's not going to, in my opinion, you tell me yours uh, going to affect any risk factor for breast uh, cancer. Because it's fermented soy, it's, 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 it's done the way that nature intended it to be. Secondly, teeny amounts, I'm talking dust of soy, is in the capsule. So I, I want to uh, uh, make sure that people who have fear of that don't ignore it because of that reason. And secondly, I have learned just my own, I think it's, I think it's true, I'm not sure, that the, we really need to double dose that one in the morning, one at night, because it doesn't mm -hmm. quite get the 24 hours covered with one pill. Is that Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, it's got a short half life. Yeah. So, and you're absolutely right. It doesn't, natokinase doesn't have the isoflavones in it, which are the quote phytoestrogens. So, if you're worried about that, uh, I don't think you need to be worried about it, but if you are worried about it, it's just not in there. It's like eating soy lecithin, like soy lecithin doesn't have the, the isoflavones in it either. It's the isoflavones that people have said, oh, those are phytoestrogens, they mess up your hormone balance. Well, sometime you and I should do a whole show on phytoestrogens because soy is not even at the top of the list for foods that have phytoestrogens. There's flax, for example, mm -hmm. you know, and so people have zeroed in on soy and said soy is bad. Uh, I think it's the GMO soy. That's the problem. Exactly. We know that's exactly. the issue. Like, but natural soy, especially Eating things like tofu and tempeh and miso, uh, soy sauce, I, I haven't really found an issue with that. And I've read that literature over and over again. So sometime let's talk about phytoestrogens. I would love to because it's been a controversial topic for decades. Yeah, and, and the thing is away. traditional – uh, schooled people, just traditional school people, they're alarming uh, these women for no good reason and it's just sending them into a, a difficult place. Dr. Rantry, I cannot, again, thank you so much. I really feel like sometimes people like you and, and I, I kind of feel like myself um, – are, are explorers like in the old world when, when, when people would get on a ship and they would go to a, a piece of land that had never been uh, – no one had ever even stepped on and they went and they just found new new evidence of, of potential of something. And I really feel that you know, you're, you're learning something that 99.9% .9 of the other people who are educating on health simply don't know. And it doesn't matter that we are in the minority. We are game changers. We are we are helping the trend. We are feeding uh, people's knowledge that they, they are hungry for because you have credibility. You're not out there just to make a buck or do I mean, you're not getting paid nothing to talk to me for this hour. You're here because you care, because you're knowledgeable and you're wise. And, you know, I always say for my podcast on many of them, I separate the world into two classes of people, learners and non-learners, because if you're a non-learner in this foggy world of health, you're going to lose most likely. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just going to happen. Well, you're the teacher and you have taught very, very well today. And I just cannot thank Thank you enough. And I know listeners feel the same way that you took your special time out an hour to sit here and talk to us about something that's life saving. We're not talking about how to make your hair grow thicker. We're talking about saving <laughs> your life. So thank you so, so much, Dr. Roundtree. You bet. It's been a great pleasure and I'm happy to do it any old time. 
And we will get back together on another topic. And I love the one uh, in regard to to the soy and the isoflavones and all that. We need to clear that uh, this this very uh, confusing uh, conversation yeah. up too. So all the best to you in Colorado. And hopefully, uh, like I said, I've I fly small planes. I've flown to Colorado before. And I look for the day, maybe the next couple of years, I go back out there and we can uh, sit down and have dinner together. Yeah, or maybe we can hop over the Continental Divide together. That would be awesome. Yeah, you could really show me around. Well, all the best to you and all the best to the listeners of The Holistic Navigator. You now have a full-fledged, empowered uh program to help your own natural pharmacy. And if you've listened to any of my hundred podcasts, you know, I have a, the deepest belief and, and trust in our own intuitive and designed genetically uh, pharmacopoeia within, but we have to know how to access it. We have to also know what we're doing that's kind of uh, weakening it. Again, it's not all about nutrients. We need to think about, you know, our sleep, our mental state, our happiness factor, uh, many other parts to this puzzle, but when you're just hit like a baseball bat with, oh, I'm feeling so rotten and something is not happy within me, that's a pathogen, you now got a program. You got the the common sense things and legally check with your doctor if you're being treated for medical conditions. Uh, not everybody can do everything. If you're on tons of meds or you have something else, uh, we're certainly not pretending to to say every person, but majority can do it. But if you have a question, call your doctor. If they are completely clueless and completely biased against it, find somebody else. They work for yeah. you. So, yeah, they're working for you. There you go. I love that. <laughs> I told somebody that last night. All right, Dr. Roundtree. All right, everybody listening, thank you for taking your time for The Holistic Navigator. Till next time, stay fearless. The information on this podcast and the topics discussed have not been evaluated by the FDA or anyone of the medical profession and is not aimed to replace any advice you may receive from your medical practitioner. The Holistic Navigator assumes no responsibility or liability whatsoever on behalf of any purchaser or listener of these materials. The Holistic Navigator is not a doctor, nor does he claim to be. Please consult your physician before beginning any health regimen. 